Hello and welcome to the Beauty Talk podcast. I am Letitia Bishop, your host, a professional makeup artist and beauty writer. Thank you for coming and listening to another show. If you like all things beauty, please consider subscribing to the show on whatever podcast platform you are listening to. Also, come and say hi to me over on Instagram at Letitia Bishop. So today we're going to be talking about tech neck. I'm sure you've heard of this term, but if you haven't, tech neck is the increasingly popular issue that we are all experiencing because we are on our phones for a long time. It is the repetitive movement of lowering the head forward and looking at our devices constantly throughout the day for many hours and they keep growing and causing wrinkles and lines along our neck is also upper back pain. So I have a few things I'm going to discuss about technique for the visible uh, wrinkles and lines on our faces. Now, let me just say, if you hear a weird sound in the background, like a fan buzzing sound, that is my computer being a 2015 year old computer. It's old. But I really just want to get this podcast episode recorded for you guys. So hopefully it's not too irritating and you can move past it. Um, I'm waiting for Apple to bring out the new MacBook Air. I really want the MacBook Air, but I have heard rumors or I read rumors that they're going to put it with the MagSafe adapter, which is what my 2015 year old computer has. um, And I use it. I constantly am using this feature because I'm always knocking out the power cord with my foot on my desk. So I'm under the impression if I buy a new computer, which I desperately need, as you may be able to hear with the fan, um, I'm scared that if it doesn't have the MagSafe part, my computer's just gonna be in a thousand pieces within a week. So yeah, hopefully they're bringing out the new MacBook Air in this year, early quarter of the year. Anyway, let's get into tech necking talk. Um, I am constantly reminded on a daily basis of the word tech neck. Uh, my kind husband constantly says to me, tech neck, tech neck, you're doing it again. And reminds me to lift my elbows up and my hands up when I'm on my phone or lying on the bed or whatnot. And he's, he kind of does it out of tough love or like helping me with my necklines. So I can kind of appreciate that. Um, Okay, so tech neck and a few points I have written down about tech neck to chat with you about is skincare for necks is a little bit bullshit. Um, Sorry, but it just is. Um, uh, Yeah, where do I start with that? I put all of my skincare that I put on my face on my neck and lower like to the tits. just because um, the the only areas I would have cautions with that is if you're using really strong active ingredients maybe just keep that to the face and like the chest where we get some sun damage here but the th- the the skin on our on our neck is actually like really quite thin and there's less sebaceous glands and oil glands there so it, it you do need to be a, a tiny bit cautious with like by putting everything that you put on your face on your neck but not too cautious. Um, yeah. So some creams marketed specifically for the neck. Hmm. I just use my face creams down on my neck. Um, and that seems to be no irritations for me, but I have fairly stable skin. So assess that for your skin type as well. Um, there is neck masks I have seen around. Um, like a sheet mask but specifically for the neck which is it's a nice idea uh, yeah that will um, enhance and pump pump up the lines uh, temporarily um, there is also things I've seen on the market called um, by this company called Silo S-I-O where they make um, silicone masks they make them for the neck for the chest uh, for the eyes and for the forehead where it's like a sticky kind of silicone that you can wear like while you work from home or just doing chores around the home. You kind of stick it on, it's a clear strip that will adhere to your to your neck skin. And this is basically being like an occlusive, like a, a, a strong barrier, allowing the skin underneath to plump up and reduce the appearance of lines again, temporarily. Um, but I guess the more you use it, the 
the better your lines will get for a while on 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 the neck um yeah that sounds like quite an interesting product i would be willing to try that specifically for under the eyes as well to pump up the under eye lines um there is also things out there you know we have the led face masks the, the, the light therapy mask. There is also ones for specifically for the neck and chest that you can get like the, the bendy foldable ones that you can tie around with a strap at the back. Um, they, would, they would have great benefits for your skin if you use those consistently and 10 minutes every day um, to improve the elasticity and the collagen of your skin and to just enhance your skin. Um, but also other things you can do is on the more serious treatments side. There is things that you can get done in the clinic at the office by dermatologists and um, you know people that are allowed to do this, which is you can get a filler injected into the lines of your neck, like very little tiny bits of filler could be injected into across the lines. And you can also get Botox on the sides of your neck, which is like the, the muscles that you kind of use when you kind of go like like something's gross or repulsed like where you stretch your mouth <laughs> if you're watching the video you'll see what I'm doing um, where you go like this <laughs> these these kind of like muscles along the side can be injected with Botox and that helps relax and um, rejuvenate the, the neck skin as well Botox has been shown to have a lot of like skin smoothening and plumping looking effects as well um, yeah, so those are like some more serious treatments you can get. You can also get, um, there is some types of lasers also that will help with that. And that's all just, yeah, in plumping it up. But the, the Botox, yeah, the neurotoxins will relax, relax the muscles. Um, some habits that, you know, without actually having to buy anything, some daily habits, you know, is not looking down as much, putting you know your your hands up sitting upright these are all going to prevent further tech neck and reduce maybe some of the lines that we that we currently have um also like a laptop stand is something that i have purchased last year and i am in love with it, it i i always get a lot of back pain and shoulder pain which we will get to soon um from from you know just being on the computer writing on my phone and I think getting this stand has really helped it just elevates you just that little bit with your eyes looking up slightly and your back just positioned better um, sometimes it's a good idea actually I saw somebody and they said take a photo of like you sitting from the side angle and have a look at how you you actually sitting and you might you might see that you're actually bending quite a lot this is another thing that I want you to do is like when you're on the subway or in line somewhere or just out and about observe people's postures and just see and notice how bad it is and yours is probably similar I mean I'm speaking to myself here so don't be offended and just like a little daily thing you could do in your head is when you see and you take notice of someone's posture, that can be a little like, oh, you're, you yourself, like, sit up. Like, that can be a reminder for you to have good, to, to, to adjust your posture because it probably is at that time not great. Um, and then don't forget to apply sunscreen to your neck. I'm a big sunscreen um, believer, preacher, talker. What is a podcast episode here without me mentioning sunscreen? Uh, because UV rays, if you even if you're like wearing a hat and you're doing all the right things, you still need sunscreen and also for the neck uh, because the the UV rays can bounce. They they bounce from surfaces and then they bounce up onto your neck. So don't think that it's out of the sun. Um, you still need sunscreen there, and that will just help prevent um, further tech neck lines because the um, you know wrinkles and these things happen because the skin on our neck. And you know, even when you were younger, you still bent down, but now they're coming out more because as we get older, our skin deteriorates and gets less, um, has less elastin, less collagen, and that is all from the sun. The sun does that to us, so wear your sunscreen. Now, I also want to have you, uh, I also invited my friend who is a chiropractor to speak a little bit about 
what um, I'm, I was just talking about the things that um, Technic does visibly and like superficially, but I'm not um, qualified to talk about like the internal and the muscle problems and back problems that we may receive on the other side of our body um, from having this incredibly bad posture long term. So I will let Alex, my friend, um, talk to you a little bit about what you could you know you know how things can develop if you don't try to correct your technique so over to alex hi everyone this is dr alex chen i'm a chiropractor here in hong kong thank you so much leticia for having me on the podcast i've been listening for a while now so i'm really excited to be on here talking a little bit about what i see every day in my office and that would be tech neck. So what tech neck is, is basically a postural sprain or strain. So that is an injury to either the muscle, the ligaments, the tendons, or the joint itself, or it could even be all of the above. I see this a lot in my patients, especially those who sit in one position for a long time, mainly office workers, and Usually these are chronic conditions. So what that means is that people feel these types of symptoms going on for weeks, months, even years. And I'm always happy to help out any way I can with these patients. And it actually is quite an easy condition to treat, but it just takes time and does take some commitment from my patients. And with tech neck or postural strain, people are usually feeling tightness, um, reduced range of motion, also in more serious cases, I see people with numbness and weakness going down the arm, and this can progress into quite severe pain. So in a normal condition, someone suffering from tech neck or postural strain will still be able to function in their day-to-day -day activities. And the concern here is that when it progresses to more severe cases, it really starts to interrupt your day-to-day -day activities because of the pain, the discomfort, and the lack of motion. So in these cases, that's when I start seeing people coming into my office, calling in for emergency slots, because that's when they start to get really concerned. But in a best case scenario, if your symptoms are not going away within one or two days, so that's the tightness, the pain, the reduced motion, if it's lasting for more than one or two days, I would recommend going to find a licensed either physiotherapist, chiropractor, massage therapist, your medical doctor, someone who can take a look just to make sure that everything is okay and really get some treatment for it. Because like I said, these are chronic conditions and they can be managed, they can be prevented. And the prevention is key here. I always recommend to my patients that movement is the best advice. So there's no best posture, best chair, best desk. It's just movement. So if you can keep yourself moving, so either switching between sitting and standing, going for a walk, that would be the best way to prevent tech neck or postural strain. Also, you need to realize what your offending posture is. So I think everyone can imagine the typical kind of computer position where you're slouching, leaning forward, your chin is sticking out. So you really wanna try and avoid this. So I would recommend whatever chair you have, make sure you have a backrest that hits at least your shoulder blades, have your spine as much as your back as possible touching the backrest, pulling your chair all the way in and actually leaning on the backrest, okay? So this can support your muscles, allowing them to relax and prevent some of the strain moving further up into the spine. A lot of times when I see people with these types of postural strains, their upper back is actually quite locked up, very restricted in motion, and actually quite weak as well. So if we can get the upper back moving better, so doing almost like a cat-cow type of yoga stretch, in addition to some resistance training of the muscles around the shoulder blades, this can take a lot of the tension away from the neck and really help in preventing and treating some of the symptoms of tech neck.
So I hope this little overview was helpful and we can go into a lot more details. If anyone has any questions, please reach out to Leticia and I'm sure she'll forward them to me and I'm always happy to answer. All right, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of talk and information from an expert like Alex um, and just further enhanced our need and desires to fix our bad posture and tech neck because things can get pretty bad. Um, that's it for today and I will speak to you on the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the show. You can find details on everything I mentioned on the blog, The Beauty Talk. I'll leave a link below for this episode's post. While you're there, be sure to sign up for the newsletter so every episode is delivered directly into your inbox. That way you'll never miss an episode. I'd love to hear from you and see what you think of the episode. You can follow me on Instagram at Letitia Bishop or I have a private Facebook group which you'll also find a link for down below. Please don't forget to subscribe on any of the top podcasting platforms like Spotify, Google and Apple Podcasts. If you liked this show, please send some love by writing a review and I'll see you in the next one.